Um, so we've heard from uh, industry leaders, we heard from uh, a lawyer. Uh, I think it's time to also look at the technology side, and so I wanna uh, welcome Brian Gainsley from uh, um, Red Hat. Uh, Red Hat is uh, uh, working with us on the open developer platform, providing this reference architecture for open source collaboration is one of our platinum sponsors. So thank you so much for being here, Brian. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. So we want to talk a little bit about how do we spark innovation out of open source? How do we get new creative ideas out of this collaborative process? Now, we know technology is everywhere. That's a fantastic piece for technologists, and obviously, all of you are here today because at least you have that curiousness DNA. You've got a little bit of that, how do I move ahead with my career? How do I help my company? And we know it's part of everything as well. We know technology is now part of, it's part of banking, but it's part of our kids' toys. It's part of how we sort of live, work, and play, to borrow a John Chambers uh, uh, phrase. You know, it's part of what we do. Now, the challenge of that is it's also incredibly disruptive. And if you're in financial services, you heard Amber talking this morning about, about blockchain. Is it disruptive? Is it not disruptive? You're sort of fighting those battles every day. If you're in media, you're wondering, is, is Netflix going to compete with you? If you're in the hotel industry and real estate, is, is you know, Uber and Airbnb going to compete with you? So we know it's disruptive, but we also know that it's fantastically uh, powerful. And so the challenge becomes, how do we realize when it's disruptive and how do we realize when it's going to help us take advantage of what we want to do? And this is always the big question because as human beings, we traditionally, we enjoy comfort. We like believing that the things that we've done in the past are gonna help us be successful in the future. Our stock price may be way up, so why do we have to change? And the question is always not if we'll change, because we're all in technology. We sort of know change is the one constant that we always have. The question is always, when do you have to invest in order to not be blindsided when that change happens, right? If you're Nokia and you have 300 million phones and in 2007, Steve, uh, Steve Jobs stands on stage and talks about a, a phone, a device that's gonna cost 10 times as much as the thing that you have, has zero market share, and you go, yeah, that's not a problem. And now we think 10 years later from the iPhone announcement, you can't imagine your life without either an iPhone or an Android phone or something disrupting what you do. And so the question becomes, when do I make those changes? The real question is not, if I make those changes. We know we're gonna make those changes at some point, but how far behind am I gonna get? So there's some fantastic data that's come out of uh, the group that does a lot of the DevOps surveys these days, a group called Dora, and what they found from their highest performance, uh, highest, high, highest performance performing companies, the ones that are developing a lot of software, shipping a lot of software, since everything we're doing nowadays is being driven by software, they're 200 times as fast in terms of shipping software on a daily basis making bug fixes, collecting data from their marketplaces, making analysis on that, collecting feedback on that, and making changes. If your competitors are 200 times as fast as you and you're not prepared for that, how fast do you think that hockey stick curve takes off? And so the question becomes, what do I do about that? How do I manage that innovation? How do I keep up with everybody else? And we all have budgets, we all have a fixed number of developers. Some of those developers are wearing t-shirts. Some of those developers are stuck because they're sort of jeans and they're sort of coats and they're not sure if they're allowed to do that themselves. The other thing that we found quite a bit is the mindset is not just when do I find that innovation change, but the mindset is also are we open, we're all talking about that here today, but are we also hybrid? And hybrid being hybrid in the sense of technology sometimes, it's are we hybrid cloud? Are we building some things in house, leverage what we have, but also take advantage of the world's greatest computing resources like AWS and Azure and Google and so forth. But also, are we thinking about hybrid in the sense of, of business models, right? Are we breaking down where those supply chains used to be, where our distribution models used to be? We think about the world's greatest uh, you know, movie theater these days. It used to be Blockbuster, it became Netflix and they sent us CDs and we had a physical good. Now we had digital goods, but they were passing along somebody else's goods and now they're winning Emmy Awards and Oscar Awards for making their own stuff. They've become a hybrid company, and we see this all over the place. Um, so we believe, from a Red Hat perspective, the way we're gonna go about doing this is through open source, not surprisingly. It's fantastic that you are all here. It's great that over the last couple of years people have embraced open source. We've been doing this for 20 plus years. It's been a little weird to be that person that's out in front of this, because for a long time we were those people in the basement with pizza. We were the ones that people were like, why are you doing that stuff for free? Why are you doing free software? And what we found is the puck, you know, the great phrase of you know, Wayne Gretzky, skate to where the puck's going, the puck's kind of come towards us. 
right? There's now a million plus projects out on GitHub, right? There's a million plus projects, and like Amber said, some of those may be completely abandoned. They may be a one night fantastic idea and they got abandoned, but a lot of those projects are driving what goes on in the world, right? Now, it's not just code that's driving this, it's culture as well, and that's one of the things that we find, we sort of live this day to day, there's really four pillars to that. You've gotta be willing to collaborate internally and externally. You've gotta be willing to work on shared problems. Nobody cares about your problems if they only affect you. We've gotta go find broad, horizontal problems to work on. You've gotta be willing to work on transparency, and I know that's a difficult thing sometimes in the financial services industry, but in order to take advantage of those, whether you think about them as free resources or great ideas, you've gotta be willing to do this in the open and then you've got to work towards standardization. Now, there's power in participation. You only get the benefit of this by helping out. You don't get it for free, right? You don't necessarily just get to go, I'm going to take that. In fact, actually you do if you want, but as Amber mentioned and some others have mentioned, you don't necessarily get the community that wants to help you down the road, right? So having a mindset that we're going to not only maybe take from the community, but we're also going to participate is incredibly important. Now, I'm gonna skip this just from a timing perspective. How do we go about doing it? It's very important, and we recommend that a lot of people take a look at this. You participate, you find the things that are interesting to you, you find the things that you're willing to participate in. They don't all have to be new ideas. You can just go and contribute. You can contribute docs, you can contribute bug fixes, but you're hopefully you're gonna contribute engineering. At some point, we integrate those. We decide what does the marketplace want? We integrate those with other technologies so that at the end of the day, and Gabriel talked about this in the beginning, your value line is that starting point. We wanna be that starting point for you, right? We wanna give you things that you can then go, great, I can go start and go do things. I wanna take the friction out of it. And then finally, we stabilize those things because at some point, we talk about the mainframe being old and boring and so forth, we still do billions of transactions on that. At some point, the technology that's cool today becomes old and boring, but you still want it to work. We're in that business of making sure it's stabilized. It looks like this from a technology perspective. We take a million, we funnel those down into projects that become open source projects, and then we turn those into technologies. It's a fairly straightforward process, right? You can look at this just like you would any other technology vendor's roadmap. And then what we're seeing, which is really interesting more and more, is we're seeing companies contribute, right? We, talk, we saw JP Morgan talked about this, we saw BNY Mellon, Capital One is a great example of this, but it's also, we're seeing companies that are contributing that you may not think of as technology companies, right? Lyft, they're, they're a taxi company. Uber, they're a taxi company. They're contributing code that's being used every day, right? We talk about Amadeus, who's now contributed more code as simply they, they manage transactions for airlines and so forth. They've contributed more code than major vendors have around technologies like Kubernetes. We're seeing contributions come from all over the place because every company that wants to be a software company or is a software company wants to benefit from these. And I'm gonna finish real quick with a couple of stories. Um, and I wanna talk about these in the context of, is this applicable to me, right? We're a big bank, we have a gigantic building, is this stuff applicable to me? I'm gonna give you two examples. A lot of you are trying to figure out how do we start something new, right? And it's cool to be able to go out to GitHub and go, I'm just gonna jump in, but sometimes you want a little bit of help. We have an organization that's called the Open Innovation Labs, a company called Easier, uh, Easier ER AG, uh, Easier AG, basically said we have an idea, but we need some help. And in four weeks, they took four developers, one designer, and basically reinvented the, hotel or the hospital check-in system, the doctor check-in system, right? There are groups out there, like Red Hat, that have programs in place that aren't massive consulting opportunities. They're just three or four weeks. We help you get some software in place. We help you build a minimum viable product. We help you build a little bit of culture of what's possible so that you can go to your executive team and instead of presenting them one foil that you're gonna talk about for four hours, you go, here's an application. We could build upon this, right? Now, that's cool, that's Greenfield, and a lot of you will go, well, that's not us. We're not Greenfield, we're a huge bank, we're a huge financial institution. Can that, is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. KeyBank's a great example of that. Now, KeyBank's a great example because they had a problem. They had a massive outage one time, and I'm not here to highlight their outage, I'm here to highlight what they did beyond that. What they did is they said, we're going to take open source technologies, containers, Kubernetes, they got involved with the DevOps movement, they wanted to talk about continuous integration, and they're in the business of acquiring companies, right? Uh, that helps them grow their marketplace, helps them grow their footprint. What they've been able to do is they're now able to leverage that technology. They don't want to be in the building the platform business, they want to leverage platforms. They now deploy 10 times a day in the middle of the day for new acquisitions. 10 times a day, how many people deploy into production 10 times a day and feel really confident on it? 
We've got their CFO and CEO now going on, on uh, Kramer's show saying we're a software technology company because they take advantage of open source. They want to be in the banking business, but they want to take advantage of that speed and, and, and efficiency. So with that, we look at that as that's really the open source way. Contribute, get heavily involved, look for ways to stabilize it around uh, community, around collaboration and so forth, and work with the people that are here. These people want to work with you. Thank you very much for your time.